I think, yes, I am. Oh, there she goes. And I did it, finally. What's up? All right, hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna share. Oh. Yo, all right. Hi. Hello. So we are live. We're um, live. Do you, all right, add a stream. There it is. Can okay. you see it live on your side? I can, we're gonna, we're fine enough. I can, if you can see my slides, then I'm good because I have two monitors. So I can see you over here. Yeah, I can see your slides. Just, I guess if you were going to do it, just do from like the uh, slideshow, start from the beginning. We're getting a lot of good mornings, hi, hi. Shelby's, good all morning. this stuff. Hi. <laughs> um, but yeah, if uh, if you want to go ahead and get started, you can. Yes. And I will, if I do see a question or a concern or a comment or whatever, I'll make sure you know it, okay? Okay, thank you. I appreciate that because... Dude, I thought I thought I had this. I thought tech was my my jam, but guess not. <laughs> well, streaming <laughs> okay, is a little bit different, but it, yeah, it shouldn't okay. be too bad. I'm here in Georgia for anybody who who uh, maybe following the story in here in Georgia, meeting up with some of our cool agents here. Got the family here, so Shelby's gonna take over, do her thing. We got it's Danielle Farrell. What um, up, Danielle? Is saying hi. But she's gonna do her thing and kind of give some value of uh, uh, how she was able to grow a hundred plus agent team so quickly. Um, so yeah. I'm sure you already got it. You're gonna tell maybe a quick bio of who you are um, yeah, in these yeah. slides, but do your jam. I'm gonna jump off the screen and I'll monitor everything in the background. Okay, perfect. Okay, guys, because uh, of tech, I could not figure out how to do this in a display mode that would appear on the screen, but that's fine. We're rolling with the punches. Good morning. I am super excited to be here to talk to you guys about easy and effective forms of leverage that, yes, led to growing a team to over 100 agents and a lot of other things, but really easy and effective forms of leverage is what we're talking about today. And on the agenda is I'm going to do a little bit about my story in case, you know, some of you guys don't know me. Uh, we're going to talk about time. And then we're going to talk about just making sure is my are my slides full screen or are they they're full screen okay okay perfect <laughs> then we're going to talk about leverage in your normal life leverage in your business life and a couple closing thoughts so jumping right in who am i my name is shelby johnson it used to be shelby osborne i got married earlier this year so my name changed weird uh, I am 32 years old, and before jumping into real estate, I was in the Army for six years, which moved me to Fort Bragg, which is why I was in Fayetteville for the beginning parts of my real estate journey. Um, and I got out to pursue real estate, in which I've been pursuing, focused on for five years in the state of North Carolina. I, a lot of my business originated in Fayetteville. I now physically live in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, so a little bit of my history. Year one, the year that I got out of the Army in January 2018, I was the Keller Williams Rookie of the Year for all of North and all of South Carolina as a solo agent. I closed 48 deals that first year. And by the end of the first year, I had also acquired 16 rentals in my portfolio and created this thing called Python Properties that some of you may have heard about. And if you haven't heard about it, Google it. It's pretty cool. You should go to meetups. If there's not one in your area, then you can start one. There's a starter checklist for that. Anyway, year two, built the five pillars woo -woo, uh, team. We start at Keller Williams, move over to EXP Realty. It's a team of primarily investor-minded agents, growth-minded people who are looking to do more in the world. And I built my portfolio to 40 units by the end of year two. Year three, I uh, expanded to Charlotte, North Carolina, and by the end of the year, I had 74 rentals in my portfolio. Year four and five, we evolved from the traditional team model, you know, the Gary Keller um, millionaire real estate agent model into the EXP community model. Um, and I standardized my, or stabilized my portfolio. And we grew by the end of year five, the community to over a hundred agents. And last year I did a bunch of direct to seller marketing, wholesales, flips, et cetera. Okay, why am I telling you all this? Besides the fact of now you get to know a little bit about my history, I wanted to segue into the idea of time. Because maybe like if I was hearing that, or sometimes I look at people and I'm like, holy shit, like how there's not enough time, right? There is too much to do. There's not enough time. 
to do all of that shit. Like, settle down. That's too much, right? But <laughs> I kind of wanted to teach you guys about like how time works. So time works. There's 24 hours in every day. Everyone has the same number of hours in a day. There's just the possibility if you're thinking, holy shit, how does Ruben get so much done? There's just a chance that you have to consider that maybe you are not using your hours wisely. You have to consider that. And if you guys have ever played that game, have you ever played that game Whack-A-Mole? Like this little picture over here where like the, the shit just like pops up and you're like whacking, whatever. And you're like, ah, and you're like trying to hit all the, the shit and you feel like you're never actually possessing. So that's probably what you're doing in your life with your time. So having said that, and understanding that everyone has the same amount of time, I want to talk about what differentiates the people who seem to do it all versus the whack-a-molers. And it's this idea of leverage, right? So uh, how many of you guys have heard of the 80-20 rule, or the 80-20 principle? It's interesting because I can't see. That's fine. Hi, Bob, please. Okay, anyway, I'm not going to worry about the comments. <laughs> so the 80-20 rule states that 80% of your results come from 20% of your actions. So that means if you focus 100% on those 20% actions that generated your results, you can do and achieve so much more. But the problem is that other 80% of shit still has to get done. Like it has to get done at some point. So that's why we use leverage. So that way that those 80% items are still operating and it allows you the freedom to focus on the 20% that generates the actual results. Hopefully that makes sense. So now we're gonna play a little game. Okay, we're starting with leverage in your normal life. And again, we're talking about we're talking about easy and effective forms of leverage. We're not trying to be fancy. Everyone has to deal with normal life stuff. So do you guys know where your time is going? Do you know where your time is going in life? Or is it just like a black hole? And like every day you wake up and you're like, oh my God, I'm just gonna do whatever's hitting my face first to play the whack-a-mole. At the end of the day, and you're like, what did I, what did I get done today? So it's really, really important that you guys understand. If you don't know where your time is going, you need to think. You need to think. You need to reflect on what you're doing in your day with your time. You need to track it throughout your day, so that way you can make a list and be honest with yourself about where your time's going, and then pay, uh, pay special attention to the items that are straight. Because if it's frustrating you, if it pisses you off, those are the things that we need to implement leverage onto immediately to alleviate that frustration from your life. Does that make sense? I can hear you saying that. So, <laughs> in your normal life, where's your time going? I assume that it is going to these items. We have, in your normal life, you've got to get groceries. You're, you're probably cooking. You're cleaning at some point. Laundry never stops piling up. You have to shower. <laughs> Maybe you're picking out clothes and you want to look cute, and that takes you 45 minutes to do. Um, household tasks, lawn care. You're freaking drive to work. You know, 27 minutes each way in the traffic. Um, maybe you're walking the dog. Maybe you're going to the gym, or maybe it's just bullshit. Maybe you're just like scrolling on your phone and you don't even realize that an hour has passed by and all you're doing is watching Taylor Swift reels because. I have been there. <laughs> I have recently discovered how cool Taylor Swift is. Yes, this is the first thing to say online. And her, I just watch a lot of reels. And I, I recognize that now that's where my time is going and I have to be aware of that to cut that shit out. Anyway, so for those of you who are playing along with me, I hope that you resonate with this list. This list of, this, my, yes, my time is going to these things, right? So now let's play a game called how can we easily and effectively minimize these time sucks in your daily life? Okay. Here are some ideas for you to consider. Groceries, guys, you are, you're at the grocery store, you're parking, you're getting into the, the store, you're going through the aisles, you're looking for what you want, you're standing in the line, so a huge line because it's after your work day and you are waiting to check out, then you're driving home, you're doing multiple loads of unloading the laundry up to your front door. And holy shit, how many times a year do you do that? 
a lot. You probably get groceries like at least once a week, right? So hypothetically, follow along with me here. What if your groceries could get delivered to your door? Do you think that that would alleviate some of the time suck that you have to deal with in your daily life? And if you had that time back, do you think that you could use it more effectively in your business, maybe the 20% tasks that would generate the most results? Hypothetically. Okay, I know what you guys are saying. You're like, oh, Instacart, by the way, this is, this is a clickable link and I'll send out the slides. And uh, if you sign up, I get $10 off my next delivery. <laughs> guys, this is what you're thinking. You're like, God, Shelby, that's probably expensive. Like, I can't afford to have the grocery delivery service. Like, who do you think you are? Okay. Yes, fair. However, Instacart is $99 for a year. $99 for a year. So, hypothetically, if you spend 30 minutes once a week, and that's it's probably more than that, it's probably 45 minutes to an hour, once a week on groceries, and your hourly cost that you've dictated to yourself is, let's say, that you are worth $50 an hour, do you think that this Instacart will pay for itself within the first quarter of the year? The answer is fucking yes. The answer is yes, guys. And the cool thing with Instacart, too, is that you can save your favorites, all your favorite stores, your favorite list of groceries, because let's be honest with ourselves, we probably eat the same shit. Like, we're just eating the same stuff. It's running out. You know, we're ordering the same stuff. So if you don't even have to search for what you're looking for, you can just add your list to your checkout cart. You can take the time that it's delivered to you, and then it shows up at your door. Do you think that that would be an easy and effective form of leverage? I think yes. Okay, that is one example. I've gone through all of these, which I'm actually I'm actually going to go through, guys. So groceries is Instacart, and also you can choose to leave a tip. You choose not to leave a tip. That is a little extra money, but to me, it's like entirely worth it. Another one is meal prep. People are like, oh, I'm just going to meal prep because I want to be healthy and it's going to be gross and I'm going to hate my life and don't want to eat that stuff. Wrong. Meal prepping. Granted, you will save money and you will be healthier. It also saves time because now you are eliminating that process of what do I want to eat for lunch today? Oh, do I even have enough groceries in my fridge? Oh, um, how long is this going to take for me to cook it? That's like all pow brain power just being sucked out of you, time and brain power. But if you had meal prepped, you've time blocked for once a week to prep all of your lunches for the rest of the week. Do you think that that would buy you back time and brain power into your life. Yes. Cleaning. Roomba. Have you guys heard of it? Those little eye, eye vacuum things? Yes, it costs like what, like 150 bucks or something like that. But that's one last thing for mopping, sweeping, getting underneath the table, all those crumbs. Um, if you guys hate laundry, this is this is why on this other slide up here I said, what frustrates you? I don't mind laundry. Laundry is fine with me. One of my friends here in Charlotte hates laundry and she says that that's all her and her husband fight about so what they subscribe to is a to you laundry service and i don't think this is in fayetteville i don't know where the majority of you guys are watching this but in the bigger cities they have this laundry service where you can literally just put your whites your darks your dry clean whatever you want it goes out onto the front porch they pick it up they clean it they come back they deliver it to you and that's leverage that's time that's sanity that's back into your life Okay, now the items like like showering and walking the dog, the commute to work, and the gym. So those are ones where you're like, I have to do it. There's no, nothing else that I can you know outsource for these type of things. But if you are really inspired or motivated to learn something, to knock something out, these are great opportunities for you guys to self develop. Listen to an audio book, listen to a podcast. If you're doing your commute to work, that's a great time to knock out calls. If you need to call people, granted, you know, be careful, don't like text people while you're driving. Um, walking the dog is a great time to knock out your calls because you guys are all in business, right? Picking out clothes. <laughs> Ruben wears the same t-shirt all the time and he saves a shit ton of time in brain space for not having to pick out the cute, perfect outfit every day. And for years, all I did was just wear my five pillars or my like eye house back, eye flip shirt. For those of you guys who know me, you know that's true. Um, so that is a great way to leverage picking out clothes. Household chores and resupply. Um, if you are going to market, 
I, I don't know how you survive. I went to Target the other day because I didn't find what I wanted to do on Amazon delivery. I got so distracted and sucked in so much time. And then I became depressed about my life because I was like, oh my God, everything in here is so cool. Like, I, I think I actually need an entirely new house and I need to throw out everything in my house and redecorate. So <laughs> that is a huge distraction that you do not have to put yourself in um, by using Amazon Prime delivery, free delivery, and free, free returns for a year. Or this is called Task Rabbit, guys. So, like, hypothetically, my TV. I'm married now, so my husband gets to do that. Yay. But <laughs> before I was married, there's this thing called Task Rabbit where you can go on and you can find candy home services. Like, literally, they put together this table that I'm sitting on. A Task Rabbit dude came over and put together this IKEA table because IKEA furniture, putting it together is the devil. <laughs> so outsource it but the key is um the key is outsourcing only works if you use your newfound time wisely if you outsource it and especially if you're spending money to outsource it if now you use that time to watch taylor swift reels no wrong <laughs> you have to be able to use that time on the 20 percent task to lead you forward in your business life whatever direction you want to go um, okay, and my last little note that I want to make on this slide in general is the bullshit. So if you are, when you're going through your life and you're thinking about where is my time actually going, and you do realize you have this moment with yourself of honesty, and you realize that your time is going to the Taylor Swift Reels, what you need to do is you either need to delete the app, delete the distraction entirely from your life, or you need to move it out of sight. So if you're having a really problem, you know, with Instagram or Facebook distractions, add them into like a little social media folder on your phone and move that damn folder off of Instagram. Do not look at it. And that's the thing with distractions in general, guys. Like, yeah, distractions are super powerful. And even if your phone is in sight, it's still distracting you. So we're going to talk about that on the business stuff. But out of sight is truly the only place to be out of mind. And, and out of sight, like, cannot be in your pocket. It does not work. It needs to be, like, in the next room. Anyway, um, moving right along. So hopefully you guys agree that some of these things are going to affect the leverage right now. If you don't do it what you have to set it up in a way that is automated so you do not have to think about it in the future. This leverage in an automated way alleviates the bullshit that takes up most of your time. So when you're going through these things, it's like, what can I do now to set it up for forever, right? You're thinking of your future self in all things. And for those of you who know me, you know that I'm obsessed with my digital calendar because it's free and you can set reoccurring events. So to bring it back, let's say, once a week, on Sundays at 5 p.m., you have an appointment with your sponsor. You record an appointment for 30 minutes where you pick out your clothes for the next week. Every Sunday at 5 p.m., you are doing this. The appointment with yourself is a reoccurring event in your life. And then Monday morning will never come. And you'd be like, what do I wear today? You, you have eliminated it from your life. Does that make sense? And the same thing with, with literally all of these things. You can automate. All right, moving on to your business life. Guys, your business life, where is your time going? This is the same concept, guys. You're going to think, you're going to track throughout your day, and you're going to identify what frustrates you. In your business life, I assume that your time is going to these places. You're probably going phone calls that just take forever. You can knock the seller off the phone. Or text, holy shit, when you pick up your phone and you have 45 missed, you have text that you have to reply to. Same thing with email. You open up your email and it just floods your inbox. And you're like, oh my God, you're overwhelmed, right? Notifications in general. Maybe you are working on that really good email and then your phone, ping, and now suddenly you're doing the text and then you have a call. Oop, suddenly you're on the call. So these things can eat up your entire day. These are the type of things by the end of the day, you look back and you're like, I busted my ass all day and I have no idea what I've done to show for it. Zero. Um, another thing that, you know, researching for clients, let's say they're really interested in um, playground, 
for their kids. Now you're like researching neighborhoods, you're like trying to find what one has the best playground, or maybe you're researching for yourself because Ruben says that you you use your database, you use a CRM, and you're like, I don't know how to find that. So you're like researching for yourself. Sucks your time, right? Appointments, uh, listing prep, contract flows, clearance, new gen, social media, overthinking. These are places where your time is probably so let's talk about some easy and effective forms of leverage to mitigate some of this. Okay, calls. <laughs> this, I avoid them. Hardcore, I avoid them. And if you guys know Ruben, which you all do, he also avoids them. Guys, I don't know if you know this. Um, so in my personal opinion, there's different opinions for everything. Do not get on a call that you do not know the purpose of. If someone just calls you out of the blue, you probably don't want to pick up until you know the purpose because most of it they're either going to be able to handle on their own or uh, they can shoot you a text and you can figure it out on your own time. And the reason why I am bringing this up is because so think about the people who really have their shit together. Are they answering every phone call that comes in? Are they stopping what they're doing and answering every text that comes in or every email immediately? The answer is no, because they are using their time in a way that allows them to get deep. So, which is not what we're talking about today, we're talking about leverage, but we also talked about the 20% that generates the results. So the 20% of the tasks you need to do to generate the results. In order to do them effectively, you have to be able to get into deep work. Deep work only comes through focus. Focus does not come if you're constantly distracted. And agents in particular, guys, agents will be like, well, I'm always available to my client. That's to me a cop out. If you're saying like, I'm always available to my client, that means that you have not set the expectations with your client up front of when you are available so that way you can effectively be the best agent for them. If you're constantly on call, you're the whack-a-mole. Back up to the top, that very first slide, you're like reacting, you've no, that, again, opinion. I know that that doesn't fit well with everyone, but that is my opinion. So avoid calls. Guys, there's this thing, I think I included it in here. In your, I did, okay. When calls come in, you can set up auto responses that are personalized to your own business. For instance, if you go to the setting part of your phone, you go to phone, you can click respond with text. So that way when phone calls come in, it's not like you're just uh, ignoring them, you know, which feels rude. You can ignore them with an automatic text that says, with the client, anything I can help with over text, or on the other line, call you back in a few if you do want to call me back. I am always with a client, guys, which I'm never with a client <laughs> anymore. When someone calls me, I'm with a client, anything I can help with over text. Because then you will find out if it's something that will actually take, you know, your time. Hopefully that makes sense. Notifications off, period. This goes back to the people, I'm always available. No, you're always distracted. So I'm talking about not vibrate. I'm talking about your phone silent, your phone face, the face down. Man, I'm cursing too much on Facebook. <laughs> your phone on silent, face down, and preferably out of sight. If you were in a coffee shop somewhere, put it in your bag. Put it so it's not touching you because you will imagine it vibrating. You will imagine it ringing, and it will pull your focus whether you realize it or not. If you're at home and you can leave it in the other room, you should. And then you have time dedicated to yourself to go and check and answer those things. Um, okay, easy and effective forms for leverage for researching for clients. This is one I'm actually gonna skip forward real quick. So like, guys, a lot of new agents, actually, so <laughs> a lot of new agents or investors in general feel like they have to know the answer in order to be taken seriously. So like if a client hits you up and is like, hey, I'm interested in uh, whether or not I need flood insurance, and you spend the next 45 minutes researching flood insurance, that is a complete waste of time, and you could use your free leverage in the form of freaking Stephanie Foley. Do you know Stephanie Foley? She's a freaking angel. I love her. <laughs> she's um, a fan of North Carolina, but she's an insurance provider, and she knows her shit. She is the subject matter expert, and she wants to leverage her shit. So what I do in those instances I will email Steph, I will DC the client and say, hey Steph, will you please help John Deere find out whether flood insurance is a good you know, investment for his person, whatever. And then, hell yeah, she takes it and she runs with it. That is free leverage right now. And that client is not thinking, oh, 
Toby didn't know anything about flood insurance. She's a dumb agent. No, all they're thinking is, I get the answer and she helps me quickly. And uh, Stephanie is amazing. And I have to. Does that make sense? Like, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, other freebie examples of that. So when you're researching for yourself, use your lender. You don't have to research, you know, the different types of loans or the concessions allotted for each type of loan or the appraisal timeline, because all you have to do is you tag your lender in and let them be the expert. Same with banker. I used Sherry Turner at First Citizens Bank and I freaking love her. Insurance provider already talked about Stephanie. Property manager is a great course of leverage for you, contractor, bookkeeper. So most of you are free as I wrote it. Guys, you do not have to be an expert. You just need to be one. Easy and effective form of leverage. Um, researching for the self. Same, you need to ask yourself first, who might know this? Who might already be a subject matter expert within my sphere? Um, and then the other thing you have to ask yourself is, am I researching because I actually need to know more information or am I stalling to take action? You're probably stalling to take action. You're like, oh, I'm scared, so I'm just gonna pretend to myself that I'm researching to get closer to my goal, when in reality, you know enough, you're just not taking action. Okay. Um, appointments. This is when you can't really outsource the piece in the beginning because you are the face of your business, but you can take control of the situation. Do not let the client dictate your movement throughout the process. You are the leader, you operate as such, and then when you have control, you can steer it in the direction and be much more efficient with your um, Oh, emails. Another thing, guys, with the, the text and the emails, if you guys don't have templates, holy shit, you are missing out on everything. Literally, in real estate, everything is it's the same shit over and over again. So all you have to do is you create the text once, you create email once, and then you save it to your template, use it for every client here on out. So I actually was gonna show you. Um, let's see. It's delayed. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you can see that there are, this is just an example of buyer templates for every buyer, they get the same thing. They get a welcome email, they get vetted started, property tours, you know, under contract, offer review, all of this stuff It's the same every single time. And if you do not have templates, it is something that you need to create. And don't freak out when you're like, oh no, I need to create templates in my life. All you do is you go back to the last email that you sent to the client and you save it as a draft and modify it so that it works at a more general scale. And then that's your template. Because as you go through your real estate life, you will create your templates and add to your systems as you go. Okay. Oh, Ruben. Ruben's back in the house. Perfect. Hey, whoa. Hey, Hi. what's up? Hi. I, just want, I just want everyone to know, like, if you have any questions, because I'm, I'm kind of monitoring in the background, um, but if you guys have any questions, concerns, or even comments or anything that you want to add to this, just let me know, reach out, say it there in the comments and we will get to the questions. I'll jump on here. I'll interrupt Shelby nicely and then we'll be able to uh, answer any of those questions. Okay. So if you do have questions, let me know. Going back to it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much because the it is tech and it's definitely my fault, but it's super delayed. So like what I'm talking on the screen, it's like, literally a whole minute delayed before it shows up on what I can do. So like, I'm, I'm in a weird space over here. So Ruben, please jump in and interrupt at any time. Um, okay, back to easy and effective solutions for leverage. To buy back more time, you can also outsource all the admin stuff, which if I've talked to any of you before, you know, I'm, I'm big on a listing coordinator to take all of those pieces to prep the listing off your shoulders. Because if you think about it, guys, your goal is as the agent is to be the decision maker with the client. Anything other than the decision can be outsourced. So like for instance, on a listing, if you go to a listing appointment and you come to a decision about a plan with the seller, you can take that plan and you can hand it over to a listing coordinator to leverage your time. That listing coordinator now is the one who gets the quotes from the contractor, who schedules the measurements, who schedules the photos, who preps the listing in the MLS. And that buys back your time to focus on 
generating more business or whatever your 20% most important task are. The same thing goes from contract to close. Decisions are made between the client. Once the decision is made, the plan is handed over to the executed. Uh, Aaron, a great one. Guys, this one, is actually, I would notice it hit him, Kim Bunnell, uh, one of my agents on the Five Pillars on the community squad, when I was like, hey, are you driving to properties to put the lockbox in the door? At that time, I, I think he was. I'm like, okay, so are you telling me that you value your hourly pay as $10 an hour? And she was like, no, oh my God, like my time is worth more than that. And I'm like, well, your actions don't correlate with that. And I'm embellishing a little bit again. Uh, <laughs> but guys, you have to think about it. If you can hire someone for less than you would accept payment for to do it, you should consider outsourcing it. Just a, a way to change your mindset. Um, and a lot of you guys don't have money, that's okay, because you could always do an intern, which I did this for you. Um, I, I linked. A lot of these are hyperlinked, guys. I hyperlinked the CSP program because if you guys are outside of Fort Bragg, there's a career service program in which the Army provides interns and they're paid by the Army so you have to pay them. Um, I've used this hardcore. And then you can have them do all the runner duties, put the listing signs in the yard, you know, take the lock boxes on and off the door, make copies of keys, whatever you need to do. Um, and, and okay, moving on to lead gen. This is one that's really hard to outsource, but I challenge you to be more purposeful in the stuff that you're doing every day. So hypothetically, you're at the gym or you're walking your dog or you're at Lowe's and you are you know, picking out paint colors for your house or whatever. Let's keep lead gen in your mind as conversation starters. So I'm not saying like, hey, I'm a real estate agent, you want to buy a house for me. But if you know, you're in Lowe's with someone and you're in the same line, it's like, oh, or like, are you renovating your house? And they're like, yeah, you know, I'm considering selling a year from now. Like, that's an easy example of just making sure that you are purposeful in your conversations. Um, social media, this is one that can take up a whole lot of time to do, but an easy way to leverage it or implement it into a routine into your life is just to share as you go. So instead of you know spending three hours creating some fancy posts. You can just, as you are showing a house to a buyer, you can share what you're doing as you go. And that way you're not setting aside, you're not eating up more time, you're already showing the house, you might as well share it on your social media. And then um, overthinking. Your time is probably going to overthinking this can just be minimized by taking action. It's way easier said than done, but yeah. Okay, and then the 3D examples I already talked about, use your team um automate it what can i do now to set it up forever who not how as, as tasks come in train your brain to think about who could do this not when will i be able to do this that change in the mindset will um change your world and then like i mentioned before you're not creating any of this overnight this is build and document as you go um but let's talk about okay guys now i've hit you with all these fucking ideas you have life ideas that you want to implement. You have business ideas that maybe you want to implement. Maybe your head is swimming. And you're like, that was way too much information. But I, I have, you know, five words on my note list that I took while she was talking. So the most important thing that you guys can do when you go to training is set aside time in the future to implement the training. Because you can go to training all day, every day, and still not get anything done. What you have to do is... Before you leave the training, actually, right now, open up your calendar, flip to next weekend or next week, and create a three-hour time block in that calendar. This appointment is with yourself. Then you're going to go through the slides, which you're going to go out through somehow, or you're going to go through your notes that you took on this, and you're going to implement everything that we talked about that you feel like is right for your life. And by implement, I mean you're gonna download Instacart. You're gonna set up, you know, your connect your credit card to the Instacart account. You're gonna go through your favorite store and make your little grocery list so it's there for you. You're going to, you know, go through your emails that you've sent in the past and create templates out of those emails. 
Guys, I know you're probably looking at this and you're like, three hours is a long time. It's actually not enough. <laughs> it's not enough time. Um, so at the end of that three hour appointment, when you're still looking at your list, and you're like, man, I only did half the stuff. What you do is you need to flip to the next week and you need to set another appointment with yourself. One of the most powerful things that you can do is use your calendar as a working and a planning space and not just appointments. If your calendar is only for your showing or your listing appointments, then it's not being used to the fullest ability. The calendar is not for you. You have to make appointments with yourself to implement all the things that you want in your life to get to the point where all of the leverage, all of the 80% tasks are just getting done in the background. Okay, a few more tips and then I'm done. Okay, tips, guys. Consolidate your tasks into a single location. If you have post-it notes here, you have a handwritten notebook here, you have um, a list on your computer, you have a list on your phone, that's not very effective. Think through whichever one you use and like most and consolidate your tasks into one list. My one tip. Another tip is if you don't use a mouse and a separate monitor, for sure the separate monitor, you are missing it. Um, be super mindful of waste. What I mean by this one is throughout your day, you, you are wasting more time and energy than you realize. And I like to use the coffee pot example. So there's a coffee pot on your counter. And every morning you go and you take the coffee pot and you walk across the kitchen to the sink and you fill it up with water. Then you walk back and you put it back on the stand. And then you walk three feet to your left, you grab the coffee out of you know, the freezer or wherever you keep it. And then, okay, so in this time, every single day, you are walking, walking, walking. This is waste. If you move the coffee pot right by the sink and you put the coffee in the drawer right above the coffee pot, you have eliminated that waste. And in your mind, you're like, God, Shelby, that's like 15 seconds. Like, you're crazy. 15 seconds over... Every single day, 365 days a year, over five years, that's like weeks of time. Okay, I'm bad at math. <laughs> but you get my point. And the thing is, you can eliminate waste in so many ways in your life, and all of that will compound. None of the changes that you need to implement in your business are big changes. They're tiny changes. It's the 1%. The 1% changes every single day will change your entire world. Okay, and the last little thing is being busy does not mean productive. I see this all the time. People are checking emails and they're texting people back and they're on calls. I'm like, just because you're busy does not mean that you're productive. Closing thoughts. Y'all, no one is superhuman. Like everyone has the same amount of time back where I started. So if you're like, I don't have enough time for this, like you're lying to me. Quit believing your own excuses. Everyone has a reason of why they can't do it. You have to keep finding the reason about why you can't. Um, and you can do anything in this world as soon as you realize that there's no one who's going to make it happen. And that's it. Guys, that was kind of a weird presentation for me because normally I can see your faces. Like, it felt weird. Um, but please, I think Ruben's back on now. Help me. Talk to me. Whatever. <laughs> What's up? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, no. So good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. What would you say out of everything that you talked about was the most impactful. And I know that things happen at uh, different times, but for you right now, 100 plus agent organization, what would you say is the biggest piece of leverage out of everything that you mentioned and talked about today? I think that if you can change your life, like not the business stuff, if you can change all the bullshit happening in your life, it'll be a lot easier to change the, the business stuff. So I think it starts with, um you figuring out where your time is going in your personal life gotcha gotcha and what would you say is if for somebody who says you know you're gonna see my kid jumping from bed to bed in the background um but if someone says you know hey i just don't have enough time i have this in my life 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 i i want i really want to do business and i really want to scale to 100 plus agents i just don't have enough time what would you say to that person quit believing your own excuses everyone has the same amount of time <laughs> oh, that's perfect. 
<laughs> cool, 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 cool. All right. And then if anybody else has any questions, just go ahead and ask them. And then uh, I will make sure to then ask Shelby. Shelby, can you see, even see the comments now or no? The last comment I see is 22 minutes ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So the last comment or question that just came in is what are your most influential tools, tech, that you have discovered that has brought the most results? The most results. Um, fuck. I would say my uh, calendar. <laughs> but it's it's the most and, and, Okay, I really need to move this. So I don't see it. I'm going to look on my, my phone. This is fine. Um, yeah, so my calendar in general, the fact that I use it as a plan for, I place my reminders on it, all of my reoccurring events, um, personal and professional is all on the calendar. I use it as a planning space and a doing space. And if you can just optimize your calendar, which I actually did an entire, I did a YouTube video on it, which you guys should watch, um, the Shelby show. <laughs> and I think that that has been the one tool that has been most impactful on me is, is fully using my calendar. Yeah, 100%. If you were to, and if for the person who wants to scale to 100 plus agents and they've done a really good, well, they've done a decent job of creating a great, or decent job of a personal calendar. They're doing a lot better with their own professional calendar. What would you say is the next step to help them scale up to 100 plus agents for leverage and sales, leverage and talent, leverage and opportunity, all that stuff. Um, they have to document. Okay, so as you're going through life, you have to document what you're doing because you can't outsource in your business until you have something to provide the people that you're hiring, um, if, if hiring is the next step for you. So as you're going through your life, document what you're doing, and then you will be able to update that as a checklist, as a system, and then also give it to someone to hire down the road. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. there's something called TSP back in the day that we would look at is tools. Got to get all the right tools and tools are usually cheaper, which is like a calendar. A calendar is a tool. And then system, how do you use those tools, right? Which would be SOPs and stuff like that you mentioned, and then people. And then people have all the systems and tools that they need to run to scale the thing that you've built a vision for. Um, another question came in is, do you use other tools that integrate with your calendar, like Motion, Reclaim, Notion? Yes, I figured out how to do myself properly. <laughs> okay, yes, um, I use Notion. I freaking love Notion. And um, dude, you, you say you never heard of it? Yeah, I was just talking to a wife. I was like, I've never heard of it. I want to yeah. look into it. It's the best. It's like having a second brain. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, I yeah, need a second brain to make a whole brain. I got two half brains over here. <laughs> so I use um, Notion. I just use my normal Outlook calendar. And then I use an overlay of Superhuman. And those are like, honestly, the three things that I use most. Superhuman is an email application that allows you to send and set reminders for yourself to check in um it almost instantly so you don't have to pick up your hand for anything all of it is done through shortcut codes on your computer and then um you can save all of your templates into superhuman bring them up really quickly and then it will autofill with like the person's name depending on whoever the email is to and send and then you can check in and remind it's amazing wow superhuman. is it is there a cost to it um, well, I'm friends with one of the girls who works there, so it's free for me, <laughs> but mm. I, think, I believe it's $30 a month for everyone else. But, um, Ali said that there's this boomerang application that you can use for like Gmail that serves a similar purpose. Oh, okay, cool. Um, and that was this question and I just missed one and it says, what are the 20% activities you would tell a new agent to focus on? Great question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> leads. <laughs> So, okay, marketing, um, money, and relationships. Those are like the three ones. So really, it should be money first. What is going to bring money into my business in the next 30 days? So like if that's something that's under contract, you have to rep write a repair report or something like that to get it to the closing table, like that's a priority task. The next one is bringing in the next layer of business. So marketing, money, 
marketing. Marketing, it's like, okay, I have this one client right now, but I need to start thinking, you know, 30, 60, 90 days down the road to bring in consistent business. And then the last one is relationships. It's like, who am I not giving love to? And a relationship is crumbling because of it. Um, so that's, those are my three. Wow. Okay. And y'all keep the questions going. Cause if not, I'm going to, I'm going to ask another one, which is say that you've already built the SOP of everything. You got all the cool systems, the tools, the, the calendar, the notion, all the good stuff. How do you keep the, and she's giving you a thumbs up. She's so cute. I love her. And she's eating she's an apple. Girl. Um, uh, how do you get to the point to where you have all that stuff, but how do you keep the glue together of a hundred plus agent team? Cause that's where things started to get, you know, people are, are hot, highly volatile, right? So like, how do you keep the glue together with a hundred plus sales people that are out there in the field selling real estate? Dude, it's so hard, especially in this virtual world and, you know, expanding nationwide, there's different time zones and everyone's at a different place in their business. Um, I would say overall, like our community has a good glue because I think that all of us want to be more, be more training, be more than just agents. So it's not just like, oh, I'm just here mm -hmm. to build my business. It's like, no, like, you know, those people are running a marathon next month and we're doing book club and all of us are trying to grow to be better people and invest in real estate. So it's like kind of like a bigger mission to, of course, we want to crush it as agents, but also we want to crush it in life. Um, so I think that articulating that vision and having attracting the people who fulfill that in a way um, just attracts more energy, positive energy. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if you, you know, what, what kind of following does Tony Robbins have, right? Like millions and millions of people out of those millions and millions of people who have actually shook his hand and hugged the dude. Right. It's it, but it's his vision. It's his mission. It's everything that 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 he represents that a lot of people want to follow and emblem emblem emblem. Uh, I don't even I don't know. know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're this, going for. Emulate. Em emulate. 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 Um, but you know, not necessarily meet. But you know, he's making a huge impact in terms of that. So here's here's another question. By the way, if anybody else yeah. has any questions, just go ahead and ask it, and I'll go ahead and ask Shelby. Thank you which is you built the glue, which is cool. I love it. I mean, I think that's fantastic, right? Because that's a different value prop that other people could get attracted to as well. Um, but you built that, you got the tools, you got the systems, you got all the cool things, you got the glue. Now, how do you start to identify the talent within your organization that will help this thing grow in with or without you? They show themselves. <laughs> it's, it's actually really easy to see who um, has it's, it's initiative. It's initiative. They got to show up. Mm -hmm. They got to take action. And then when you have conversations, you with truly with talented people, you can see it in their eyes that they understand what you're saying. And then you can watch them go and do it. <laughs> like, it's really cool. And then they come back. So I, I think that the um, if the people need handholding, you and I have had this conversation a lot. If they need handholding, if they need someone to be like, hey, what are you doing this morning right now at 9.03 a.m.? then they don't have the initiative to do what it takes in this industry because this industry is hard and it is all for self-starters. It is for the people who take action in the world. Very difficult. It's a very difficult business. I think a lot of people get that wake up call. You know, we try to do the, uh, the expectation conversation in the beginning, just how difficult it is, you know, yeah. but you don't know until you're in it. Yeah, um, you have and to it experience is. it. You do, man. And you start to realize it's a double edged sword of the freedom to do what you want, but also there's no structure in that. And yeah. be coming back, coming from a nine to five, there's a lot of structure. This is what you do, this is where you go, and all of that. And then when you're kind of free up to that, you have to identify, man, what do I need to focus on? What you've talked about this today is what do I need to focus on to expand and to grow into all the things? Because this thing's going to be hard. I just need to keep my eyes essentially close head down and just grind and work, work, work. And then about 90 days later, I could pick my head up and see what's happened. Well, yeah, I agree. But also I, I think that at least monthly, you need to pick your head up at least for me. So it's something that I feel really strongly about as like the air game versus the ground game. And so mm -hmm. and it depends on each person, how often they need to pick their head up. But if you grind for too long, if you put your head down for too long without picking your head up to make sure that you're still going in the right direction, um, I just think that there's there's definitely a balance 
in that too, where it's like, work hard, put 100%. your blinders on. Am I still, yep, yep, yep. Okay, and then you're back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, uh, Gary Keller, or not Gary Keller, Gary Vaynerchuk says, uh, it's the clouds in the dirt. It's the clouds in the dirt. It's the same That's thing, same being thing. in the dirt and, and being in the clouds. Uh, I would say that's something I've struggled with in the past. So, yeah, no, I agree with that. For sure. We got awesome way to say that, oh, air game versus ground game. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. You need a T-shirt of that, Shelby. Well, I it's not – literally nothing that I say in the world is my own. All, <laughs> yeah. that, that was from um, David Osborne from the – what is it? Miracle Morning Millionaires. Mm. He talks about air game and ground game. He also talks about all the leverage stuff that I just talked about. Like literally I was reviewing some notes that I read of his book recently. And like after I had done the first layer of these slides and I was like, wow, I am not original. All of this shit is just stolen from, but that's the thing too. It's like, you don't have to invent anything. You just listen to people who are kind of one step ahead and then copy what they do and put your own authentic spin on it. And there you've done it. 100%, 100%. I was like, there's a while ago, I was like, man, I found the secret to success. All it is is copy people and then sprinkle your own flavor. That's it. After you've totally. kind of figured it out, sprinkle your own flavor and then copy the next person and then R and D everything. Yep. Totally. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Just go ahead and throw it at it because we got nine minutes. If not, we're going to close up shop early. Here, let me get your phone. I gave you, and if while they're typing questions, if they have any, yeah. I gave you, because I know you were out for a little bit, but um, I mentioned, I remember this super clearly back in, I think, 2018 when I was hiring on my very first transaction coordinator. And you said, Shelby, now that you've hired on leverage, the most important part is what you do with your free time now. Because you were like, that leverage is no good for you if you are not using the new time effectively to build your business to grow. And um, I thought that was really, I still think about that. So. Oh, sweet. Oh, oh, you know, we've, we've, and let me know if I said this or if we've changed it since, because it's the same thing. What are you going to do with the time that you've scaled back into your life? But what we do is an 80, 20. So you've kind of, this goes to your clouds and dirt a little bit, which is you have to reward yourself for being in a position to be able to hire on that leverage. So 20% you should get back to yourself. And is it going to be a movie? Is it going to be, you know, just sitting outside with no shoes on and just filling the dirt? Like, what does that feel like? And then 80% back into the business. Yeah, you got to make sure that the ROI is there for you to even spend that money. And the time of ROI is there too. But we've kind of split it into an 80-20 now. 20% you get to enjoy the rewards, the fruit of your labor. 80-20. Yep, 100%. Well, tell everyone where they can find you if they have any other questions and all that stuff. And we will go ahead and wrap this up for you. Cool. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the Shelby show or um, yeah, just you're on Facebook right now. Just shoot me a message <laughs> and also yeah. go to YouTube and watch my video on calendars. Seriously. Dude. Mm. I tell you what, because this is going live on YouTube as well. I will put a link to that. If you don't mind, text me that. And I will yeah. put that link in that video. So for others that anybody who's watching this later, or if you're watching it now, you can, that'd be an easy access. Just yeah, click the link in the, in the comments below. Dude, I'll do it right now. You're the best. Okay. Thanks Shelby. Thank Thanks everyone much. who watched. Bye guys. See you later. Hit me up. Bye. Bye. Adios. Adios. <laughs>